Hey guys, welcome to Redneck Light. Today we're going to be replacing the choke on both of my cars. So I've got two cars from the 70s that uh, one has an aftermarket uh, Edelbrock carburetor. This video is going to be about the Edelbrock carburetor, uh, which is pretty much a direct replacement for that. So first let's take a look at this set that I got from Amazon. So the good news is these choke caps, they all have a standard universal size for most American carburetors. Um, some of the Holley carburetors work a little bit differently. Instead of having just this little tab, the spring's the opposite way and it's got a little loop. Um, so just check the style of cap that you have first before getting this. Um, in my case, I have an Edelbrock ABS carburetor and the springs are exactly the same. This is the old one and uh, this is the new one. The thing to look for is that the springs oriented the right way. Uh, basically it's a big wound thing and when it heats up, it moves in this direction. Uh, and it'll do the same thing here, move in that direction. Also on this kit, you get some replacement uh, wiring, which is nice um, if you don't have it. Uh, the little hold down spring, a gasket and screws. So first thing, an easy way to test uh, these chokes. Now, if you've got an Edelbrock carburetor, it specifically says that you want the choke hooked up to a keyed 12 volt source. Um, some, I believe the original factory Ford carburetor had it hooked up to the S terminal of the alternator. So it actually got a uh, 12 volt AC to roughly seven or eight uh, volts DC. And it just, it works a little bit differently. But uh, for this style of cap, you do want a normal just ignition switch 12 volt source. So basically when the key's on, you want it to get 12 volts or 14 volts while the motor's running. And then I've just got the ground wire. It's uh, wired up to the uh, carb stud there, uh, which will ground it to the motor. And then I've got my uh, switch 12 volt source there. I've got a fuse in here. I just used a little 10 amp fuse just to be safe. Since uh, this wiring isn't exactly professional over here, I may change that one day, but that's the only key 12 volt source that's convenient under the hood here. So here's a good way to test your choke. What you want to do first is unhook your coil. So that way while you're testing, this coil isn't getting power. If it sits here uh, with power too long without being able to discharge it with the motor running, uh, you can burn up your coil. So that's just a good way to not have that happen. So if you want to figure out if your choke thermostat or choke cap is uh, your problem with your choke not opening, uh, you can take it off the carburetor but keep it uh, hooked up to the wiring. And uh, what you can do is turn the car on and just watch to see if that spring moves. Uh, basically what happens when the key's on and you get uh, power to the choke cap that little spring is gonna expand. And I made a mark in there, it's actually a little bit cooler than earlier, so the spring has actually gotten smaller um, since when I made that mark. But basically you're looking for that mark to move. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply power. I got the battery hook, so hooking the battery up. Keys on. And if you watch that spring carefully, it's gonna take a minute for it to heat up. All right, now you can start to see it. As, as that uh, spring heats up, that little spring's going to start to expand and you'll see it move. So this action is actually what pushes on the little rod on the choke. Like I said, key on, it's moved quite a bit from its original uh, spot and uh, you can actually feel it getting hot, getting warm. It started out in that position and as that opens and that spring pushes against it, that choke plate will open. And actually by uh, by default, it wants to be open, so as that spring opens, it'll allow that little piston to fall. All right, so here's one little thing uh, that I wasn't actually expecting, um, but the original choke is supposed to come with a little notch in the housing to uh, help align it with the uh, choke housing, and uh, the new one does not have a notch on it at all. Yeah, it should be right about there, and yeah, it's just regular little marks from manufacturing and stuff. So, we'll need to make the uh, notch ourselves. Um, it's not entirely important. These caps, thankfully, are pretty similar. But basically, if you've got the same kind of spring with the same number of uh, winds there, 
you can kind of line them up kind of the same place where that spring is. Make sure they're both the same temperature. If one's been sitting outside in the cold and one's been warm inside the house or something, uh, those springs will have be at different places. So make sure they've both been at the same temperature uh, for a while. And then, then find the uh, mark on the original housing and you can make the same mark on your new housing. All right, I've got my housing marked now, and you don't, it doesn't have to be exactly, exactly in the same spot. You're going to adjust it anyway, but that's just a good place to start, um, so that way you can line it up with the housing. It's because you're going to have this little spring retainer hold down that's going to screw into the three holes on your carburetor, and you're going to line up that little mark, the red one, with the uh, same mark on the housing. There's a little arrow on the cap to kind of help you uh, know that to get a leaner mixture meaning that the choke opens faster after you start you move it up that direction if you want it to be richer you would move it in that direction basically the choke closes uh, stays closed a little bit longer so the default tuning guide tells you to go two notches to uh, rich but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that uh, that mark right there the other thing when you're installing this cap you want to take your little uh, spring thing there and you want to hook it under that uh, knob on the piston and basically catch it to uh, close that choke plate up there. All right, we've got the choke hooked up. I've got my coil undone and I'm going to turn the key on and we're just going to take a look and see how long it takes for the choke to open up. All right, it's been a few minutes and that choke is just about all the way opened up. Now keep in mind, this is a completely cold engine. I would say that that's a good test. Um, in the future, I can adjust this back and forth if I want it to uh, open up a little bit sooner or even a little bit later um, if I need it to. But overall, I'm pretty happy. Now when I unhook the power from it, that'll slowly close as the uh, as that metal spring cools down, as the whole motor cools down, that choke plate will close. So pretty easy on a Edelbrock carburetor to replace your choke thermostat. Uh, hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.